serendipity, yeah. synchronicity, mm. perceptual readiness, free association, mm. stream of consciousness, yeah. phantasmagorical transmogrification. How do you remember all this? This is John Heilman bringing you a very special episode of Hell on High Water with the inimitable Jeff Goldblum. This is the first I've heard of it. We met at the Pendry Hotel in Hollywood where Jeff plays regularly with his jazz band, the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra, and we had a rollicking and wide-ranging conversation about everything under the sun. From Jeff's Disney Plus show, The World According to Jeff Goldblum. Are you like me, Jeff Goldblum? To the creation of the Goldblum persona. Uh, uh, uh. Jeff's life as an actor. Hanged himself by his own leash and his unexpectedly amazing and successful musical career. Et cetera, et cetera. We hope you enjoy it. Hello, my name is Jeff Goldblum, J-E-F-F-G-O-L-D-B-L-U-M, and, um, and the state of uh, Hollywood uh, is, in my opinion, as follows. I'm just uh, thinking about this right now. Yeah. The state of Hollywood Ga 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 ga, it's okay. Ya ga 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 ga. I think that says it all. But let me add to that. <laughs> the, let me add to that. This. Hey, what do I know? Is the the real answer is what do I know? I just like the story about the blind man and the elephant. Yeah. All I know is my piece of experience, touching the tail or whatever. <coughs> and so, um, hey, um. I, I know uh, a lot of interesting people out here and uh, people in the film I'm so lucky to be cross paths with and yeah. work with some interesting, vital, intelligent, talented, kind, uh, uh, vibrant people in the film industry yeah. uh, and in the music industry. So I would say it's, it's um, spectacular because it is, as we know, Hollywood right now, currently, um, as we could say the same about many other places and activities. Uh, uh, it's part of the continuum of what's going on on planet Earth. Yes. Uh, not to telescope out too much, but uh, so because you're such a big thinker, mm. uh, you make me think of it. You know, um, it's, it's nothing but good. It's always precarious. It's precarious, as we know. I don't have to go into it. You know more about that than I do. But um, the universe is also, where we are right now, is vibrantly and maybe uniquely lucky and so spectacularly um, um, worthy of celebration. Uh, you know, that, that's the story. Do we have challenges in one pocket of life? or another at one little time or another, right here, right now. See, we certainly do. We certainly do. Can I play, can I, can I play something on the television set? Play, play, play what? I want to play something on the television set. You see of, that there's a TV set right there. Oh, of the TV show. That's that a I, TV. I want to play something. I right see, there. it's a screen. Let's play that, let's play this, this, the trailer. Are you like me, Jeff Goldblum? Maybe we share an interest in... Monsters. Fireworks. Magic. Motorcycles. Dogs. Let's do that. Want to take some photos with him? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> do anything. I'm not Did doing anything. Stare. We like to go out into the forest and look for things that yeah. may very well not exist. We build our own drone light shows. Oh, that's a jellyfish there. <laughs> some magicians like to blur the law. What, what, what? Amazing. My acting life caused me to seek openness and interest in the unseen. There's always a moment of fear. Oh, wow! It's just the unknown, I guess. Am I gonna be 100% safe? You're gonna be like 99.8% safe. Here goes nothing. I love to learn about everything. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This is terrible. <laughs> really what makes us special as people is that we have specific abilities to tune in to others and cooperate and collaborate. Boy, I'm getting a lesson in a lot of things. I'm starting in first grade in a lot of areas. Hi, Jeff. Wow. Eat my dust. We'll see who's eating dust. Sometimes life's most important moments demand courage. The journey is it, not the destination. Enjoy the ride. That's 10 gold blooms out of a possible 10 gold blooms. That's my highest possible rating. I, 
I, I want to ask you about the world according to Jeff Goldblum because it's the second season. It's now streaming, right? Yes, and, that's and, right, and, on and, Disney+. Plus. Yeah, yeah, but did you like that? Did you, well, thank you for showing that uh, trailer. I got a kick out of that trailer. The people, because I'm, I'm thinking this, the people who did this, I work with good yeah, people, as yeah, do you, yeah. but those Nat Geo people and Newtopia people, they, they, um, they're they very good. For us to be ourselves, or for us to do whatever we're doing, yes. you need people to kind of put it, you know, make at least me seem coherent and, uh, you know, watch, watchable in some way. So it seems, so there's something kind of self-explanatory about the notion of the world according to Jeff Goldblum. Is there? Well, I mean, <laughs> you're exploring the world and you're seeing the world through your eyes. I would say the world according to Jeff Goldblum has a certain suggestion of what we're going to be getting I, that, that, without, yeah. without even seeing it, right? I guess so. But, but, so, but, I, but I want to ask you the question because I think we may have discussed it at some point, but wh what, why did you want to make this series in the first place? And what's different about season two than season one? What did you learn in season one that makes season two different? Two excellent questions. Excellent, excellent questions. I'll tell you, here's, here's what happened. It wasn't, it wasn't my impulse that made me, I, I didn't come to anybody, I didn't have the idea, I want to make this show. Yeah. Here's what happened. I was, uh, do you remember that show? I think it maybe it's still on. Do you know Explorer on Nat Geo? Yeah, yeah. yeah, they were fooling around with a format a few years ago. And they said, hey, Jeff Goldblum, along with uh, some other people, they said, Can, do, do three of these. You want to do three of these? I said, okay, I like Na National Geographic, all things National Geographic. Yeah. And da, 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 da. Anyway, I did them. We finished them. I had, you know who I is? And there was an interview. There were some interviews. Uh, Norm Eisen. You know Norm Eisen. I don't know Norm Eisen. Uh, I, I interviewed him. Yeah. I suggested that I interview him, and he was, you know, f fantastic to talk to. And Sam Rockwell. I said, let me talk to Sam Rockwell. And so I had a nice conversation that was kind of directed in its... Uh, they were very nice. I loved them. That's why we wound up doing something. But it was a little different. I'll tell you what happened. So anyway, I did that, and then I was in a studio on these shows. You could look back on them. And I was in a studio, and there were some teleprompter things, and I would read them, and we We'd do the show, and yeah. then there'd be you know uh, people out in the field, and da 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 da. Uh, anyway, after afterwards, they said, "Hey, you're, you you kind of made that your own," and da 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 da. And and I liked you. I said, "Well, I like you. You're so smart." They said, "Do you want to do a show? You want to do a show where you're the where you do more of that, right? Some kind of thing where you're the host." Yeah. Uh, they didn't say there was no name or anything like that. Uh, 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 I said, "Yeah, maybe. Let's 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 talk about it. I've never." Maybe, I, I don't know. And so we started talking about it. I said, well, here's, and I did start to have clear ideas and convictions about kind of what I might enjoy doing. Yeah. Which was that, uh, it may not be so groundbreaking or anything, but for me, there's, uh, I like to improvise. You know, I studied with this Sandy Meisner, a fellow wonderful teacher whose cornerstone of his acting training was an improvisation. And I taught it and wanted to learn everything about kind of this particular improvisation. And, and uh, it, it, it uh, overlaps into life and a kind of spontaneous present living, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed going on talk shows and doing stuff that are a little bit like that and being myself. And as you know, I do these so-called shows where I <laughs> extemporize and talk to people and, you know, kind of blabber. Yeah. Uh, you know, spontaneously. Yes. Uh, so I said, hey, I, I think there's something in me that's as yet even un, undeveloped that I'd like to develop more, that, and maybe we could do that together in a thing like this, and maybe I could go out and be in the field and talk to people and have real, not cooked up, I don't want to do two takes of anything. I turn on the camera as I'm meeting them, yeah. and I'm not going to pretend to know anything. I'm not going to be the teacher. I, maybe I can enjoy talking to the camera and say, hey, I invite you to come with me as I am interested and learn about blah, 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 something or other, and maybe we could do it like that, not right. cook up anything. Yeah. And so we kind of followed that. I mean, I, it's not all my idea, but anyway, they liked it. We collaborated. They said, hey, maybe here are the subjects. Maybe there's a subject for each little half hour thing. Yeah. And uh, how would you feel about this, that, that? I went, oh, well, and I would sometimes record an hour or two of associations and, and my history with and feelings about yeah. uh, and songs that I could think of that have to do with this like or that or like this. What? Okay, yeah, uh, ice cream ice or cream. Okay. denim yeah. in the first season yeah. or bicycles right. or pools yes. or jewelry or and cosmetics. Did, and did any of the, did anything hold these topics together other than your interest? Pretty soon, pretty soon, they said, well, what, there's might be a theme here. I think these are all things that people love. These are familiar things yeah. that a lot of people have a big feeling about yeah. and enjoy, but may be taking for granted. 
Uh, and maybe this science that we're known for and you as the learner about and revealer of this science could uh, be an interesting part of that. And then your particular view of it, the world according to you, that's how this idea came about. Maybe it can be your, you know, particular tangential, left-turning, you know, unexpected, uh, 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 playful ways right. of in encountering these people and these subjects that could give us what we want. And, th and then we shoot it like that. Sarah Kinney, the wonderful cinematographer who you worked with, yep. made it look good this yeah. last season. Yeah, That's yeah. How, uh, how that was different. And then the second season, to your second part of the question, yes. although I could say more about the first part of the question, yes. second part of the question, um, because I do want to say more about when we get to the voiceovers. I, you do voiceovers in many of your things, don't you? Or you've Sometimes. done that. Sometimes. I liked, I said, hey, I think I have, as I s started to do it especially, I got into the recording booth, you know, and said, I like what you've done. You've, you're very smart here, and I like what this yeah. is, but I sure don't want this to be, I don't want this to be conventional. I have just my own personal kind of aesthetic, <laughs> which is, it gives me the heebie-jeebies when I see, hello, Here's another, ep you know, welcome to another episode here. I'll see you over at the thing and we'll go over there. And then you hear me saying, well, there I was, the guy, guy, guy. And I, I just didn't want to do anything cooked yeah. up. Yeah. So I kind of wanted, I said, hey, I think I could, you know, think and talk at the same time and kind of, and, and if it doesn't work, you can cut around it. Anyway, that's what I do in the, in the voiceovers. Not, not to pat myself on the back, the second, I'm just trying to. The second, you're about to say what the difference is the, the second, second first. The second part of your question yeah. is, um, what was the difference between the second season? Well, you know, I, I liked the first season. I said, yes, let's do more of this. And um, you know who we involved in the second uh, season? After the first season, as a result of the first season, I started to get actually more interested in all sorts of things and to kind of, and science particularly, I revisited Carl Sagan yeah. in his last book, yeah. The Demon Haunted World. And I think during that period, I had an interview with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson on his show. Yeah. I, I love all that. And I told you off, off camera that currently I'm uh, a little bit obsessed with these uh, podcasts and YouTube things, shows about uh, physics and the universe and yes. astronomy and this and that. Uh, during this period, I read that Yuval Har Harari series of books. You must have read Sapiens and Homo Deus and 21 Lessons. Way over my head. So uh, I doubt it. Uh, but you know who I like, I'll, and you know this guy, our friend Kurt Anderson. Uh, well, now. Kurt now, Anderson. Now we're in business. Well, I loved Fantasyland very, very much. I know you and, did. And so much of his work, and I've talked about it more. Anyway, we, uh, I got in contact with him, yeah. and he helped collaborate on this one. And yes. when we chose the second season, uh, we did it in his Brooklyn apartment, his home. Yes. Well, that's good because I've spent a lot of time in that house. And so that means that my creative spirit, if the, if the second season is better than the first season, I will take all the credit. I Having it, left I, kind of an aura in that, in that, I thought in, that I, in that brownstone. I thought I felt something. You, you felt a little, you I know, smelled something. You yes. smelled something. I yes. thought yes. it might have been. <laughs> but I'm thrilled to be part of your, any, any small well, part of your orbit, your constellation, yeah. and Kurt Anderson is. So he enlarged, he, you know, we asked him to not only help us choose what might be interesting, uh, uh, but en enlarge and give us larger ideas about, and maybe a, a kind of interesting perspective. So, so let, me, let me ask you this. About all these subjects. Your, your feature film list of credits is like as long as my arm. So it's like a hundred and some odd credits, right? Yeah, yeah. Plus television, like very long by the standards of you know you're you're, you're still a young man, I'm, and, I'm and, you're, you're, and I've worked, but I've worked continually. Yes, How about that? yes. For now, it's almost fifty years. Thank goodness, getting yeah. close to fifty years. Yeah, amazing. right. Okay, so of all the you know you think of long of actors mm. who have your degree of uh, longevity, uh, productivity, uh, critical acclaim box office success, you name all the people. The number that you would say, hey, let's give this guy a series and, call, and let him just go run around the world and like kind of think about what he's curious about yeah. is not very high. And many, there are many great actors. You, you and I, would we could make a list again, as long as my yeah. other arm, I see what of, you're of great actors, right? Yes. So I guess my question is not kind of, well, what entitles you? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. that's not my question. My question is, what, what is it about you that it seems totally natural and that there's an audience for it. People want to know what Jeff Goldblum's take is on a bunch of shit. And like, it's there's no one who looks at this and goes, well, that's ridiculous. Why would I ever watch the world according to Jeff Goldblum? You have many people like, oh yes, well, that's a that's a that's a unique, gonna be a unique perspective. That again, many award-winning actors, actors have more awards than you. 
we would not give a shit about what their view of the world and ice cream is, and and science and motorbikes and whatever, no one would care. This is the exact yeah. speech that the, 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 the Wizard of Oz gives at the end of the movie. <laughs> They're casting that. We have actors with no more, with more awards than you, but they have one thing that you don't have, Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> they have, et cetera, et cetera. But what is it about you? Like, why is it that, like, that, 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 that again, what is it about your, I mean, I'm not asking you to be to, to brag about yourself, but yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a uniqueness of perspective that people <laughs> are like, oh, that, that'd be interesting to hear. Like he's gonna have an interesting take on the on the world and these things, and I want to go on this trip with him. Why is why is that? How did you inculcate that and cultivate that? And what do you think it is? Interesting question. Because um, even at the end of the trailer, you say you do a self-referential little joke, ten gold blooms. That's the highest gold blooms. Right. Well, that that means something, right? It does. It kind of people. Oh, well, there's a, a gold bloom. That could be a unit of measurement. Because there's a strength of personality. So I just want you to talk about that in a way without sounding like you're... Yeah, or embarrassing myself or just being... Or attempting to flate yourself or whatever. You're not, I'm not asking you to do uh, that. I'm be, asking you to be analytical. Right. Don't be falsely hu humble. Right. Let's see if we really know the answer. Well, the answer is, first of all, there are people, I'm sure, who right now as we sit here are going, I, I don't want to know. Why would I want to know what Jeff Goldblum thinks? There are plenty of those people, but maybe there are enough of them to allow us to continue more. If there aren't, that's okay. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do something else. But if there are, yeah. and... Uh, uh, well, one answer is that they're very good. I, I can't, uh, the, the, a lot of the credit goes to the way the first season worked because I watch them. I watch these shows. Yeah. I watch the five in the second season and I'm kind of delighted by them and by myself and uh, <laughs> however they, you know, d did it and how they put it together yeah. really and how they yeah. edited it. And uh, then they include, I'm kind of personal, you know, I, I um, include my history with some of these subjects yeah. and so it, it winds up sometimes me telling stories and referring to my parents and upbringing in Pittsburgh and I gave them around the time that it seemed like organically I started to do that yeah. uh, uh, and felt like doing that in the show I said you know what might be useful for you guys I'm gonna send you these two reels that I now have on DVD of all those silent home movies that yeah. we took my parents took in Pittsburgh in the 50s and 60s. You, you take all that. I always thought there was something maybe useful to do with some of that, make a movie out of it or something like that. But I think this may be the best use of it. You, you take them. Who knows, as I'm telling these stories, maybe they'll come into play. And as a matter of fact, I have in my recent possession a, a lot of photographs from my youth uh, that I've gotten. I said, well, why don't you take all those too? Or I digitized them, I sent them to them. Anyway, they use them in a nice way. And... Um, and, uh, and so when I'm watching, not only am I delighted by the show, but I'm oftentimes uh, choked up and uh, I get a real kick out of it. So they do a good job. The answer yes, is yes. that they, you yeah, know, you're, you're, see, see, they make it look like, oh, this is maybe the way Jeff Goldblum's brain is. And they do graphics for, for different episodes. And I sort of talked to them about that a little and gave them my two cents and said, hey, each episode should be a little different from the other one. It shouldn't be formulaic. Uh, it should be a little surprising. Uh, uh, it might be whimsical and this and that. Uh, I have a strong aesthetic sense myself, and my sister is a painter. Uh, if we do another season, I might suggest, and I've sent them a couple of things. She's now, if you look up the world, world of Tata Pam, my sister is Pam, you can see some of her animated paintings that she's doing right yeah. now. She's done many things. But anyway, uh, so they try to make it look like me. And I said, what's the music going to be like, as a matter of fact? And I like all the choices that they've made. So there's that. Then what your question really is, yes. is, well, me, I, 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 I don't know. You know, I, I, um, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know because it's nothing that I've... Um, purposely, strategically, tried to manipulate. No. I had a good teacher, Sandy Meisner, and he said, look, really, and this kind of relates to this show and my approach to it, and maybe why a little of it works a little bit, yeah. uh, really put your attention on the other guy, whether it's the scene par partner you're working with or the thing that you're really trying to do. Get, get your attention off yourself. Yeah. It's only natural that, you know, you want to be interesting and they've paid a tip, bought a ticket and they're there and you want to, you know, so you get self-conscious and, hey, I better look interesting. I better have something to do. But we, you want to have an antidote to that. Don't, don't fall into that. The, the antidote to that is to actually have your interest not on yourself, but on 
get interested in yeah. something. And as in, as a fact, you'll be interesting to the extent that you're interested in something outside, just like babies are uh, and uh, and animals are. They're interesting because they're 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 actually free to get involved with that uh, ball of string or the thing that the baby is interested in. So that so you might that's a healthy way of approaching things, mm -hmm. and it's good for acting. It has something to do with my improvisation and my approach to this. I'm actually interested, and then. Uh, be present, pay attention, yeah. you're going to be spontaneous and authentic if you're actually in touch with what's going on right now with or around you, you know, yeah. really. And that will trigger something that surprises you and that is authentic. Mm -hmm. Well, that's part of a little bit of a blueprint for what you can do under text acting and, and theatrical acting and made up pretending. But it's also a little bit of a help mate in what you can do in a situation like this. Do you think that you have, if you were gonna, like, if we, if we had an infinite amount of time, we could look at, and I, 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 we're gonna, I, I promised you that we're gonna, we're gonna do, we're doing a little bit of a career retrospective here. We are gonna talk about some of your work beyond just the show. Whatever we're also gonna like. talk about some, some of the music. We're gonna talk about some things, because there's a lot of questions. Whatever yeah, I like. feel like I've been peppering you with the questions for a while, not just in this room and other places, but there are many questions that are still on my mind. Uh, good, and, and me with you, that's why it's fun exactly. to be with you, because I'm interested in a million things many that, you're, questions. that you know that I don't. But I do wanna ask this question right at the top, because I think, like, do you think you have a persona that, that, that people, when, they, when people look at you, they think a certain thing, and that th that persona I think that I don't want to say what I think it is, but I feel like you have, you've you've over the course of this time and all the things you've been involved in. Part of the reason, like why there, you know, there are a million Jeff Goldblum memes, and there's just there's all of this kind of currency that you have. I actually have a hard time putting my arms around exactly what it is, but you you're not like again like many actors who are, you know, actors, great actors, mm -hmm. talented actors, right? Mm -hmm. You have done a lot of more things than that, and you now have a kind of you, you, people have a conception in their heads of you. What do you think that is? Do you agree that you have a persona and, and, that, and that people think of you in a certain way? And if you had to describe it, what would it be? Well, I guess, yes, I would agree. But probably different people have different ideas. Mm. And, and one of the things that allows that to, has allowed that to you know, blossom in one way or another, to one eye or another, uh, it are, are the parts I've played, you know, I'm in some of these popular movies and, you know, that's, uh, the, the Ian, Dr. Ian Malcolm is an interestingly drawn character from the Michael Crichton version of the Steven Spielberg movies, da da da, da. and then, uh, you know, there's that. Um, so, so, yeah, it, it, it's, it's followed, it's followed along and, and is, can't be um, yeah. ec extracted from, uh, from the, you know, those parts that I've played. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's that, and you know, it's all fleeting as we know, and it's all liquid, it's all changing, and if I say something untoward, it could change in a second, yes, as we all yes, know. Yes. So all that's fleeting, people's, because yeah. we're talking about people's idea of who you, who in the heck you are, you know. But, you know, like I say, from my point of view, all I can do is, is not try to cook something up. You know, right. some people have advised me, you know, here and there, smart people, and go, oh, well, you know, you go on these shows, you know, you don't have to tell the truth. It's a performance. Yes. And so you tell a story and blah, da, da. Um, I go, you know, and I'm interested in that. And for a long time, just doing things like this, I was, I, I was interested in it um, and tried to do it in different ways. But finally, uh, and my current thinking, although I'm still developing, is, uh, is that, no, no, um, I, 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 I don't want to perform like that. I just want to be um, honest. Now, I know the boundaries of, hey, I'm not going to tell something that I'll go, ooh, I shouldn't have said that, I shouldn't have, I gave too much information about myself. You know, I know that there are areas like that that we don't want to, you know, uh, betray. But, um, but within that, uh, I want to be actually open and, and, uh, and contributive. I do, you know, I'm here so that I can, yeah. I can leave the situation a little better than I found it. Yes. I mean, that's true. Yeah. I'm not, I, I, I'm not pretending I aspire to that. Yeah. And besides that, um, you know, I'm a late bloomer, I've said before, and I, so I am open to fi finding out more about myself. And certainly, I've gone around in many ways, there's a, a ton 
that I don't n know. I mean, just yeah, those yeah. hundred books that you're supposed to have yeah, read before yeah. you leave and or, or movies. So, so there's just plenty that I'm hungry for. And now having two kids, I got a six-year-old and a four-year-old boy, yeah. and you should see them. And if nothing invigorates you or makes you, you know, see the world through open and uh, receptive and sweet eyes. Yeah. It's you know spending time around them. So you you would you, know. you, you would acknowledge like right, quirky, right? Eccentric. Not maybe not. But those you, words have quirk, been quirk, used. Those, those I, I say them with all approvingly, of course. Quirk. I suppose so. Whatever you, whatever you think. I mean, right. here here I am with you. I but, don't know whatever whatever well, you I think. But I'm not you, trying to cook I'm, anything up. Yeah yeah no I'm I'm not I'm, I'm not actually <laughs> saying that. Like I, yeah. I think it's just kind of a question of you know I think the people who are this goes to like politics a little bit right. The most successful politicians are the ones where they're public. Pu their public face mm. is closest to their private face. It's like if they're if they're authentic, if they're being the way they are, that doesn't mean they don't have a persona. It's not cooking something. Like Barack Obama, part of his success was that the private Barack Obama, the public Barack Obama, there was they were not a hundred percent aligned because there were things that he would not. There yes. were things that he that he kept withheld, and there yes. were things that he you know. But he wasn't bullshitting anybody. It wasn't like there was a vast gulf between the private and the public. And and I think for a lot of very successful politicians that. That, that that closer the private and the public are to alignment, the more authentic they are and seem. Well, and authenticity know. is what people can can get people attached to. Well, people so know I think these can, days, don't they? More than ever. So you I think know, you if can, you're if you're full of baloney. You know? So I think you can have a persona, a public persona, that doesn't mean you're cooking something up. Mm -hmm. It's not like a. It's not a like ah. Oh, you know, my public persona is like I'm really right. a shy and quiet, retiring in in in, 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 right. in private, but in public I'm this gregarious blah blah blah. Right. It doesn't right. mean that. I think it just means that there's. I think the the for you at least that some of the the things you just said it's a, it is I think the accumulation of all of this work over a long time and all these things yeah. you've done and many yeah. late night talk show appearances yeah. and all of that stuff. People have come away with a sense of like that you're not the usual. Hollywood star, that there's more depth there, that there's some extra intensity there, there's humor there, there's the nerd quality that you know that you play to it, but also glam nerd, hipster nerd, cool nerd, rebel nerd, whatever those things are. Yeah, that is the way a lot of people like it works in it, you know. I think yeah, you don't reject any of those notions, that right? Sounds fine to me. Those are but the, but, the, but <laughs> it all sounds fine to me. But you don't think do you think there's some truth in all of that? That that's that, that's is that how you think of yourself? Not at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're you're some holy. of the more some of the more flattering, you know, you know, you know, have blown blown up, uh, blown up versions, uh, uh, variations. I don't know, but but um, yeah, though, you know. Uh, okay, it, okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I, I, you're, you're not. You don't want to. But, get... but here's what I, I can contribute. This. But yeah. Let me say this: that some actors are because we. Yeah, this should be said. So, you know, some actors purposely go, "Hey, you know, I don't want to mess up my ability to." Put on a character. Yes. If they know too much about me, I think right. Daniel Day Lewis says right. this, or you know, yes. it's a, you know, the less you know yes. about me, the better. Yes. And if I don't have a, a particular, you know, fanciful uh, set personality, yes. yeah. uh, you know, I can be a little freer in my variety of characterizations, yes. and maybe that's true. And I don't know if, how, how all this is going to impact, but so far. I kind of I'm enjoying the acting I've been doing. You know, I just did another Jurassic World. Well, I want to stop talking. We'll there. talk about it. And I've done a couple stop other things, but I'm I'm enjoy. I think I'm at the th on the threshold of my better acting work. Too. Uh, I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Well, I'm enjoying. No, no one I'm with, enjoying no one, it. More. No one with a brain in their head would disagree with that because you're you're peaking. You're peaking. Uh, really? Right? Yeah, I think so. Right now. Here's a here's a nugget about me. I don't know if this is useful, but it's like a little mantra that I sort of <laughs> yeah, say yeah. sometimes daily or when I'm working to myself. Um, serendipity, yeah. synchronicity, mm. perceptual readiness. Perceptual readiness. You know what that is. I like, do, yeah. hey, you know, I was just I didn't know about that what you just told me about, but now that I know about, oh, it's there and it's there and it's yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, free association, mm. stream of consciousness, yeah. phantasmagorical transmogrification. How do you remember all this? Uh, and then finally, and here's the, here's the key to improvisation or an, an interview, an interaction, of yeah. witnessed interaction. What you say and the way you say, which is like this, yeah. and what you do and the way you yeah. do, which is like this, makes yeah. me 
sad, mad, glad, curious, who, what, when, where, how, why, and especially open. Yeah. Anyway, that's a, enough of that. It's, it's that's obscure. a mantra. It's that's, obtuse. It's, it's obtuse. It's not but obtuse, you, but it's long. It's a long mantra. And it's also long. You know, yeah. if you learn your TM mantra, it's much shorter than that. Are you? Much, were you initiated I'm, I'm not, into TM? I've not been initiated in anything, but I'm telling you, for people who have been initiated mantras, into many things. I'm telling those mantras are, are much shorter. You can yes, say them they, under your breath very quickly. Yes, they don't they involve are. all those polysyllabic. No, they don't. Now, I'm going to play what I just a little Jurassic World. I think that we should allow our uh, magnificent, glorious dinosaurs to be taken out by the volcano. As, Silence, please. As deeply sad as that would be, we altered the course of natural history. This is a correction. Are you suggesting the Almighty is taking matters in his own hands? Senator, with all due respect, God's not part of the equation, no. What I mean is that in the last century, we amassed a landmark technological power, and we've consistently proven ourselves incapable of handling that power. 80 years ago, who could have predicted nuclear proliferation? But then there it was, and now we've got genetic power, so how long is it gonna take for that to spread around the globe, and what's gonna be done with it? It ain't gonna stop with the de-extinction of the dinosaurs. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about man-made cataclysmic change. What kind of change? Change is like death. You don't know what it looks like until you're standing at the gates. You were the character who they wanted to cut originally. Spielberg was like, get rid of this character. Yeah, that's what he told me. I don't, I, I, I'm just going by, you probably have heard the story that I've told, which is in that first meeting with him. He said, well, it's nice to meet you. We set this meeting up when a draft of the script included you, but there's a faction now yeah. uh, amongst me and my pals who are going to, uh, you know, meld that into the Sam Neill character yeah. and there's no more you. And, uh, you know, then I went, ooh, wait, 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 you know. And you talked Spielberg into keeping I you. did not talk you him talked into him anything. Into it. You, you, you kept, yeah, but you, were, you, you kept the view. Well, right? he did. Thank, but thank goodness. But, but, is, but do you think that's because of just the size of this franchise that this is the part you're best known for? Oh, one of them. Yeah. Right? Yeah, one of them. I mean, this yeah. is like a, yeah. you know, this is a landmark thing in your career, right? Yeah. There, a there. defining thing. I probably was, yeah. It has, it has been and is, and yeah. And is it still fun to make them? It was a blast yeah. to make all the ones I did, the first and second one with Mr. Spielberg, and then I had a little part in that last one that Colin Trevorrow wrote, and we were on the phone cooking up my little the details and, yeah. uh, of my little scene, and then uh, he wrote and directed this one. And it was a blast. It was early on in COVID, so we did much that was yeah. uh, protocol yeah. uh, related, but it was fantastic. We were all, in fact, bubbled up in England near, with my family there, my family was there, uh, near Pinewood Studios, right. where they shot the Bond movies, all yeah. that stuff, and many other things. And um, it was great. Yeah. Uh, it was great. And because we were so bub bubbled up on weekends, we would get together and not only have fun, but... Um, in a protocol way, but uh, also go over next week's scenes yeah. with Colin in a very focused yeah. way, and it was very co collaborative. I want to play this play this scene from the first Jurassic Park, and I want to talk about it because I think it's re relevant to why this is such an iconic part for you dokey. and why it's still relevant today. This oh, is this scene, yes. one of the most famous scenes in the first movie. Yes, yes. John, the kind of control you're attempting is uh, it's not possible. Listen, if there's one thing the history of evolution has taught us, it's that life will not be contained. Life breaks free, it expands to new territories, and it crashes through barriers painfully, maybe even dangerously, but, uh, well, there it is. There it is. You're implying that a group composed entirely of female animals will breed? No, I'm, I'm simply saying that life uh, finds a way. Life finds a way. Life finds a way. Isn't Life that, finds a way. It's iconic. That's an iconic line. That's a fun line to be able to say. And uh, B.D. Wong, of course, was in that and who's in this also in this next thing. And Laura Dern and Sam Nell, but also in this next one is DeWanda Wise. Yes. If you know her and Deachin Lockman and Daniela Pineda and Justice Smith and Omar Sy, Mamadou Aceh. Yeah. And... Um, and B.D. Wong. Yeah, I said. So b besides uh, Laura yeah. Dern and Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt. And but this but this, but this, this part, right, mm. partly is iconic because obviously the movie was huge, right? But, but like, I, as I think about like why this movie was, the movie was huge because it kind of touches on some pretty, pretty powerful things, right? 
you know, uh, the, the the war between like what with, between the natural world and what and scientific manipulation and people's fears about what we're doing to the planet and people's fears about mad, about scientists with no ethics re- 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 engineering things and those things getting out of control. And you are the voice of of, ca- of of like rational caution in your throughout this. You're kind of like the you're the you're a scientist mm. uh, when a chaos theorist. Chaotician, yes, yes. But you're really like kind of the proxy for the audience that's kind of going like, is this right? Should these guys be doing this? All of these things touch on, I think, this char- part of the reason why the character is resonant is because I think it touches on a bunch of things that people, this is a metaphor for things that people see in the world that they're living in right now, which is like, we're fucking with things we shouldn't fuck with, we're not taking care of the planet, and we're, we're, and we're headed towards some kind of doom. Possibly so. Yeah. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it seems relevant. Yes, and I've gotten myself interested in many of the things that that character gets to say and gets to say in this next one. Yeah, uh, yeah how it relates to all the issues that you mentioned and my interest in them and involvement with them. And, yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, all those things are really interesting and uh, up to us to do something about. I think that maybe part of the Goldblumian uh, persona, as it were, Seems like this is one of these parts that kind of is imprinted on a lot of people's minds because a lot of people saw these movies. Yeah, I yeah. know. Well, that's yeah. what I was kind of trying to get at. Yeah, you know, I mean, however, you know, people know me. It's a, a lot, you know, has to do with, uh, you know, getting a chance to play that part and and uh, that a lot of people saw them. Um, yeah. Yeah. How, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing. This is why I find your life fascinating. Because when, we, because when we think about things that are going on, you, like right now we're sitting here, the world according to Jeff Goldblum is out. Yes. We have to look forward to Jurassic World. Yeah. And then yes. we also have the next Wes Anderson film. Well. Among many things you've worked on. Possibly. Right? I don't know if they've officially... Well, I may not be able to, well, as your politician friends say, right. co- comment one way or another. Well, because I don't think I, you know, I don't know that they've, they they what, have they officially announced? I think those things that I don't know. I think I, there's I, I think there's a title for it, for the movie. Yes. And have they? Uh, yes, and the, and the incredible cast of it is now that they have is public. Yes. One yes, always indeed. waits for you know you always have to wait for them to officially kind of. Make an announcement. Yes, I don't think they've said it. I don't think they've said it. They've they've not said a a release date on it. Uh, But but Asteroid City, I believe, is now is now public. And and uh, Fisher Stevens, who's in the movie, gave an interview about it just the other day. He did. He did. Not not disclosing by any plot points, but talking. He said that it would be the greatest uh, the greatest ensemble cast because much of the cast is now public through the trades. And I'm I'm included in the in the cast. You are included in the cast. Yes, As as a relatively relatively latecomer. Um, and the cast is ama- is astonishing. Yeah, it's a lo- lo- lovely cast as um, usual. I mean, but but it's but it's very. This one's even big by Wes Anderson standards. Standards and, and Fisher Stevens says it's like the greatest cast since group since Bridge on the River Kwai. Yeah, I saw Bridge on the River Kwai when I was first run. What, what year did it come out? I'm born in '52. So first run, my sister and I went to the Leona Theater in Pittsburgh and saw Bridge on the River Kwai. But here's my question. Yes, I don't want to go down this path. Yeah, I want to stick with this question. We, we can acknowledge that you are in a Wes Anderson film. This, this is widely I, known. I, 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 and when I, written about, okay, it's well, on the Wikipedia, it's all over the place. Okay, oh, So this okay. is not a secret. I'm not going to ask you to divulge plot points. Okay, I'm okay. just going to ask you this question, which is, I mean, I know this is going to sound like a, a, a naive, amateurish question, but like, again, when I think about your life, how do you, I, I just, the, the diversity of <laughs> Wes Anderson over here, you're working on a movie with Stephen Fry, you know, you've got another thing that's also, you know, is out there. But, but these are these are highbrow entertainments. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the Jurassic yeah. thing. And then there's the reality show, what, yeah. if that's what we want to call the world, Jeff Goldblum. Right, right, it's right. a very diverse uh, offering of what we have to look forward to in, in Goldblum world, Goldblum yeah. land, Goldblum yeah. landia yeah. Uh, in 2022. How is that, like... How does one get put oneself in a position where one has that kind of diversity? I know that's lucky. And it's, how delighted are you to have it? It's spectacularly yeah. delighted. I don't never take it for granted. Right now, particularly, um, uh, and variety, which I, I was after early on. I was uh, I, I was never strategic or careerist, particularly. Never tried to put myself in one position or another. But it's what I would have hoped for. You yeah. know, if I could have imagined something. Yeah, I, I love that idea. It's just very, very. Uh, lucky, isn't that great? And and uh, but some of those even 
popular movies, you know, were directed by Steven Spielberg or Colin Trevorrow, who are very smart, high, sophisticated, high-minded yes. uh, oh, uh, people, I'm, I'm, as I, is Taika Waititi, yes, you know, I did yes, that yes, four yes, movie. Yes, yes. And he's, you know, a spectacularly artful and unusual and independent-minded and... Uh, uh, um, and you um, got to wear an incredible costume in that movie too. The creator, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it must have been fun for you because I know. Yeah. I did you did you dress up like that as uh, as my character for Halloween? I I I, uh, I, <laughs> I did not. I did not. Although I contemplated it, and I may next Halloween. Who would you? I assume, who would you'll, you? I assume you'll be back in in Thor Ragnarok. I can't say one way or another. Two. Well, I, I can't say one way or another. Whatever. What would you have dressed up like? I'd like to see you do. In do a, you dress in? Do, do you dress up for Halloween? You know what I did, in. The first uh, season, we did jewelry, and I still had, I, I like to be minimal, yes. so I don't take home yes. memorabilia and yeah. much stuff, but I did take home from the jewelry episode yeah. Yeah. from season one, these grills, these gold, I don't know that they were made of, they're gold colored, maybe they're gold, grills, you know, grills that you put in your teeth, so you have gold teeth. <laughs> yes. I took that. Yes. Well, that was my co- that was basically that's, my that's costume. Your costume yeah. I put I put that on because all we did I didn't go any place. We went with the kids yes. to a neighborhood where we right. could you know. But she dressed yeah. as a beautiful witch of some kind, yeah. and I uh, I put that on and a hat and some glasses. Yeah, and then an interesting outfit. I don't know what I was with my own character. So I th- there's a there's a lovely video which I'm not going to play um, of uh, Mildred Snitzer. Oh, you know. Yeah, uh, woman. We will talk oh, about the actual her. woman, oh, the not actual the band. Woman, the actual woman, not mm-hmm. the. There's the, the band, Jeff's band. The I know woman. that interview. I know that the, one interview. There's like the only interview that exists. Of been her. out there, yes. But she tells a story of of your uh, of your childhood and your in your desire to to get into this business, to get in, to become an actor. Uh, you've told many stories about your interest in music. Well, I want to talk about both of those things in a second. Okay. But she lays it all out. Yeah. You know, she lays the whole thing out. She, she basically gives her is her husband or her, her husband's brother who she gives all the credit for. She That's right. Says, I, it's I all, remember. It's all it's all his it's I, all his doing. I saw this once. Yeah, Mickey Snitzer. She was she was married to Freddie Luden. Yeah. And then he died, I believe. And then she married Mickey Snitzer, who took yes. me to a baseball game. Yes. I think he took me to my first Pittsburgh Pirates baseball yes. game. But but yeah, and she, she said there was the, an agent the, the, or something. The, she says the second hu- the, her second husband's brother, right? When you didn't get into uh, Carnegie, to, to Mellon Carnegie Mellon University, yeah. That he basically said, "Kid, go to New York, get your feet wet, and then you'll find your way towards the business." And you basically like she's like, "That's why he's so famous and successful now," well, which I think is very sweet. But why is this orchestra your orchestra called the Mildred? Why her? Well, here's why what happened. Well, why I is the Mildred nice, Snitzer's Orchestra? I thought it was a nice it. name. She's yeah. a, she was a very a lovely, nice name. She was always a lovely woman and yes. friends with my mom, Shirley, and would come over and was a kind of a naturalist. She would yeah. get it down on the floor and, <laughs> you know, my mom my mom was could, could be bourgeois, you know, yeah. in her way, you know. But uh, although lively and, you know, playful. But Mildred Snitzer was sort of unadorned, as I remember, and would get down on the floor and did exercises every day, you know. Yeah. Anyway, she lived to be over 100. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I thought that was a nice name. We were, our band, we had, for a few years, we were playing under the radar intentionally, uh, one place or another. And then um, they asked us to be part of the Playboy Jazz Festival and play at the Hollywood Bowl. And said, well, we're going to put your name in the uh, program. Yeah. What's your what's your name of your band? And so I, I thought of that okay. and said, right. you know, Mildred Snitzer, orchestra. we're not an orchestra, but Mildred Snitzer, you know, and that's stuck and that's who we are. Now, she, she when she tells this story, you know, she talks about, she, in the kind of, kind of classic old lady way, she kind of talks about, um, about she kind of, well, you know, I'll know him now from Jurassic Park. And, you know, when he went out to Hollywood, he, you know, he had a part in Taxi Driver, and, or not Taxi Driver, no, in, in Death a, Wish. A, a, a Death Wish. Well, I didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, right. and she had a part in Death Wish. Yeah, she sort of rattles off some names. Her, I'm not sure. Yeah. She's not, she's not trying to be. Of it, I know. She's, but she, she had the right things. Like, she mentioned you were in Nashville, which I didn't even know you were in, and you had a part, I believe, a, 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 a lineless part in, in Nashville, a Robert Altman's Nashville. Lineless, but yes. I, but I, 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 I again, do credit. I was like, I didn't even know. I was like, Mildred Snitzer was teaching me things yeah. as I listened to this. So, you know, I mentioned before, right? The, 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 you know, if you look at the body, you know, this incredible run of, of things that occurred, right? You know, Nashville. Yeah, it's somehow coinciding with Death Robert Wish, Altman. Death Wish, with Death Charles Wish? Bronson, an iconic film of the, of the mid-70s. Isn't that something? Early 70s. Annie Hall, one, you know, the one line that people always remember in there, you know, that you've forgotten your mantra. Yeah, I, I forgot my mantra. I think you first came to my consciousness in The Big Chill. 
Big Chill, 83. In 83. Yeah. But the thing that really, and this is a movie I want to talk about. Okay. And I'm going to play a little bit of it because okay. it's like, it's the movie that like I, when I was a young man, uh, I, I eventually ran the weekly arts and culture magazine at the Daily Northwestern. Um, and at the Daily Northwestern, where you at, were at in North, school. Where I was in school. Where I was, where I was an undergraduate. The arts and cul culture Yes. Magazine. So from 1983 to 1987. And, and so this is like the sweet spot of this period. And before that, on my way to getting to that place, I was a film critic. I brought for the for the paper for I the didn't college newspaper. College newspaper. That's interesting. And and I thought the 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 movie that changed, I don't know. I mean, there were a couple of movies that came out in 1986, that all blew my mind. One of them was Blue Velvet. Loved and, it. And Loved I, David and I, Lynch. And, and it was Loved like I was like, <sighs> oh yeah, yeah, incredible, an yep. incredible, incredible film. I agree. And the other was The Fly. Mm. 86, 87. 80, 86. Yeah. Yeah. I want to play the scene from The Fly because this movie, more than any other movie, made me... I, I don't know that there's a movie in my in my in in that period where I was first starting to understand movies yeah. that I thought was more incredible than The Fly. And um, and I want to talk to you about it because we've never talked about it. Let's talk, I'm let's, certain. This yeah. scene, I mean, I don't know. It was heartbreaking. Watch yeah, this scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of insect politics? Neither have I. Insects don't have politics. They're very brutal. No compassion. No compromise. We can't trust the insect. I'd like to become the first insect politician. You see, I'd like to, uh, but, oh, I'm afraid, um... I don't know what you're trying to say. I'm saying... I'm saying I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it. But now the dream is over. Yeah. It's an incredible movie. An incredible, like, I, David first of all, the, the, David Cronenberg is a genius, yep. obviously. I agree. Yeah. Lovely fella, too. How, t just tell me the story of how you ended up in this movie, because to me, part of the thing about this film, what that was, and I remember being a huge Cronenberg fan in general, but th this movie came out right when really the AIDS crisis was starting, and I remember a yeah. number of people, I remember people who were very twigged to the notion that this movie was not about was 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 a transposition of a famous 50s sci-fi movie with Vincent Price, yeah. but that he was reimagining it for the age of right. of AIDS and 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 for the age of of, of yeah. now we live in this age of pandemics too, where where diseases where like it was it was about a big metaphor for disease and what disease does to people. Yeah. Um, just I, how did you end up in this movie and did you recognize its brilliance when you were in it? Um, it's still a movie that's kind of sh I think for people if they watched it now they're kind of sh it's sort of shockingly mm -hmm. it's hard to watch for a lot of people. Right, that is hard to watch for a lot of people. Yeah, and but an incredible piece of art. I think so too. Well, it's collaborative, of course. David Cronenberg, uh, very brilliant, smart guy from Toronto, and um, uh, wonderful artist. And he wrote that script. You know, that's a beautifully. Gee, isn't that a beautifully poetical? It's and, incredible. Yeah, it's really, it's really lovely. And um, Gina Davis, of course, is wonderful in it. And um, Chris Wallace yeah. won the Oscar for that makeup. So, you know, we were he was very thoughtful about that. He yeah. we went over to his place and we tried everything on. He had the, the stages of the thing and at that stage I think it was 5 hours in the makeup chair and, and uh, so it was very careful and beautiful. The music is makes a does something to me in that Howard uh, Shore. Um, so uh, yeah, but so here here's what happened at the beginning. I they just sent me the script as I remember and uh, and I read it. Did he, was he offering it to me as I read the script? Maybe, maybe not, but I, but I read it. And uh, uh, I remember when I read it, I was like, mm, boy, oh boy, oh boy, that's delicious. That's really, that would be some part. I'd like to do that. And uh, I had a special affection for Vincent Price movies too. And for remembering uh, the other, because my sister and I went around that period, saw, you know, Diary of a Madman and Tomb of Lygia and all that stuff. So I like that kind of thing, but this was something very different. Um, and then I think I met with him, Dave Cronenberg, and you know, 
said how passionate I might be about this and yeah. you know uh, all that and there we there we went but you but you at this point had been had there had there been anything I mean you've been in obviously a bunch of great movies I mentioned a bunch of them like great kind of transcendent yeah. films. I worked with Phil Kaufman and in Invasion yeah. of the Body Snatchers and, and, and the right stuff and the right stuff yeah but you yeah. hadn't really had a lead in a in a film at this pitched at this level nope. I mean this was a movie that when I, I remember it was a movie of course we would that back in those days would never have gotten an Academy Award nomination yeah. for as best picture because it was too mm -hmm. out, kind of avant-garde yeah, genre kind of and genre too avant-garde and too genre yeah, yeah, yeah. but this is a this is kind of a big moment for your career no I mean with I, the, I think a, so looking I mean, back you know how do you know how do you ever assess that and like I say my focus was always on you know my my activity you know instead of uh, the career but um, but did you but yeah I think looking back now yeah no I think that was uh, that was good. Good for me. It's yeah. a movie that's. I just think it's a movie that stood the test of time in a way that yeah, kind of is a. Is a I, it's a, sort of stunningly good. And I guess my question is really, how much you guys spent talking about time you spent talking about what it was about? Was that a discussion, or was that just all in Cronenberg's head, and you had these lines to read, and you were kind of playing it straight? We talked a lot. But we. It was very collaborative, and I kind of started to get more self trustful during that period and find myself, you know, and my sea legs and because uh, I did have a lot of convictions and passions about elements of that thing and the story as it was kind of in a few different places evolving and I, you know, had a strong feeling about it and we, he was lovely and collaborative and, yeah. uh, uh, and a great teacher and a, and a good collaborator. But, um, but no, about that, if I'd done it now, if I, if I were to work with him now and uh, do the same thing, uh, you know, I, I bet I would have asked that question because I've done that since, and I, I like to know things like that. Uh, it, it might help, you know, um, it always occurs to me. So if there's anything in his mind about where it comes from or his yeah. dreams or his social concerns yeah. or his medical uh, sensibility uh, or anything like that, it's, you know, it would have been very helpful. But no, as I remember, I don't think we... we, we, we we talked about that much. So here's what I want to ask you is this question. And when you think about, um, uh, okay, I said, I could, you know, we could talk about, uh, uh, we could talk about Independence Day. We could talk about all of the Wes Anderson films. You know, we could, I mean, Isle of Dogs, you know, my heart. My heart, such you a like great, such, you like I, dogs? Loved, I love dogs. Well, did you love see our dogs? episode on dogs? In yeah, the of, course, of course I saw it, so, yes, I've seen yeah, that, yes. Yeah, I love dogs too. So you, you know, saw our dog, Woody, in that episode. Yeah, I, yes, and I've seen Woody on, on, in, other, in other places, including on the, uh, on the socials. You know, I, I, you know, I love uh, Grand Budapest Hotel. I love all of your work with Wes. Well, it's all he's, fantastic. he's very, very brilliant and enjoyable. You've got, you should talk to him. And then there's the whole television Thing. I mean, there's like parts on like Laverne and Shirley and Columbo and, you know, like these old... The Blue Knight. I did oh an episode my God. of The Blue Knight. Dear God, man. The, yeah. things, you, the things you've been in. Yeah. And Starsky just, and Hutch. Yeah. Starsky and Hutch. Yes. I watched that. I mean, yes. I, again, we could play this. This would be a seven-part uh, Goldblum episode. Yeah. We just would do Goldblum, Goldblum, Goldblum. Yeah. Uh, Malkovich, Malkovich, Malkovich. We'd just do that. Yeah. But here's the things that I had forgotten about. Yeah. I want to say two things because these are not actually they're different. I want to play this first of all. I want to play the Mac one of these Mac ads because oh. there was a period of time oh, when that's... you were almost the vo you were like the voice of Apple. Yes, I, this I, I, this I, Mac ad for yeah. the original iMac back in yeah. 1980 no 1998 1998 yeah. I believe. Let's play this again. I forgot about, I forgot you did this, but you were ubiquitous. Yeah. So, you know, it seems like there's a big party going on these days. Everybody says, what's your email address? What's your email address? Hey, everybody, I'll email you. I, I don't have an email. What's this? You know, like that. And you feel left out. You've been confused. It's too expensive or something. Well, now good news. There's a computer so easy. Ten minutes out of the box. You're onto the Internet. You're emailing everybody. You're part of the party. It's as easy as, as uh, you know, licking a stamp. So first of all, it feels like it's a million years ago. <laughs> yes, <laughs> certainly does. A million years ago. <laughs> but yeah, but but well, that thing. You know, the i is that the iMac? That's called yeah, the, the original I have, iMac. They get they get for that they along gave you, with gave you fifty of them. Well, they gave me one of them. I took yeah. one of them, yeah. and I have I have it in my backyard. Yeah, next to the barbecue right now. Yeah. <laughs> I have it. Does, does, does it work as a computer, or do you, put, do you like put barbecue sauce in there? Or something? No, I don't do anything. It's you know, it just sits there. It sits there, but it's, I kept it. It's one of the things I kept. I don't. I told you I didn't keep many things. And that one, Steve Jobs called me at my house. Yes. Believe it or not. Yes. And said, "Hey, you know, would you, well, you know, how, how how can we get you to do this?" And then Lee Clow, for those who know, at Shiat Day, Day, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, came close. over to my house and said, "Here's what I here's what I think we we can insane, do." Insane, insane surfer genius. Yeah, yeah. Uh, down in Venice here He's, as the founder with with Jay Shiat of Shiat Day. How about and a that? genius, a genius creative. Uh, and hippie, and, uh, and you know, uh, even yeah. that's right. And back then, he might have been wearing the, the, this yes, thing. Yes, I mean, actually, I was thinking that might have actually been Lee. Uh, it could have been. Like if that was a, a, a thrift store find. Yeah. That's right. And back in those days, he said, "Here's what I think we can do." And I said, "You know, I think I could do something for you yeah. that's a little that might make this a little special." I said, "You know, I can read the thing, but turn on on the day. I, I don't want to. I don't want to break my arm patting myself on the back. But I did have a kind of a, yeah. an appetite for this, and I said, "I think this may." Please, all of us, turn on the thing. Thirty seconds. I'll do it in thirty. When I see the clock winding down, I'll stop talking. But tell me what you want it to be about a little bit. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And this idea, you really want that yeah. word or that idea? Okay, let me kind of improvise, and I did, and that's how that came about. And these days, I could show you. Can you hand hand me the, not the phone, not the thing, that other notepad? Oh, see, I started to take these notepads. Thanks. Yeah, and um, and, ah. and and what I do, I, I, I learned a little bit about the, the guest. If I were yeah. doing your spot like yeah. I did in, in my show, yeah. I'd learn a little bit about Jeff and, uh, you know, what I needed to know. Yeah. But not that too much. much more. Yeah. Not too much. Yeah. And then just kind of. And then on the day, on the, in the car, I wake up after a dream at night. I do this, and so, but that. on the day, but I actually do it, on can, the can day, I just, can I say that? on the day, I get up after a dream, and I go, in the morning, I'm kind of fresh, and I go, what interests me today? What actually interests me today? And I look at the, the who, what I'm going to do that day, and I go, hey, I know, here's a song that kind of interests me, and here, here are the things that interest me, and then it goes the way it goes, but I kind of go... What am I actually interested in today, which may be different than what I was interested in yesterday? You know, um, anyway, it's it's not groundbreaking and it's nothing. But because just because I, I we like each other, I just uh, feel like these telling are, you these are, telling these, you these things that are of no interest to anybody, probably. But they're, 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 I like is, that little thing. It's utterly, I should say, utterly incoherent. Right. Well, you can't read. My dad was a doctor, you know, and so so um, I write in a way that. I'm not trying to keep keep it like the Rosetta Stone, so that you can't indecipherable whole, is what you want to say. Bunch of, there are a bunch of movies here. Let's see what's on. What's this list? What is this list? Oh, Kill oh, Bill. Oh yeah. Skyfall, Casino Royale, Goldfinger, yeah. From Russia with Love. Well, I'm not sure why Kill Bill is on this list. So yes. far, I'm reading Bond movies. Yes. Um, uh, things I cannot read. I know what French this is. French Connection, Apocalypse Now. Right. That's right. Lawrence of Arabia. That's right. Isle of Rats. Isle of Isle Cats. Of dogs. And it says Isle of Cats. I think that says Isle of Cats, no? It doesn't look like dogs. Isle of dogs. D O G S. Okay. Isle of yeah. dogs. So why is Isle of dogs? Like, what is this a list for? What's that list? What is that? I'll tell you of? exactly. I'll tell you exactly. Oh my God, that was a so list, many... and I used this actually on a in an interview recently. It was for Stephen Colbert, and he I knew he was going to ask this question. He does these fifteen questionnaire thing, <laughs> and he says, "What's what's the best action movie?" Uh -huh. And I went on. I googled what are what are considered action movies, and my own list that inspired my own list anyway i said i can't name one here are a bunch of them that i i'm thinking of currently there it does there is a little notation that says sexiest over 60. i think that might be a reference to yourself he's well, who, self, self who, self oh the james corden uh, james corden yeah. that was wow. from a pre-interview i don't really understand how you can possibly keep i mean first of all these are chicken scratches and second of all this is the mm. tiniest little thing yeah how do you well, use that it's little tiny thing? because if you have to have it on your person yeah. if you had to have something right there with you i see is you've there got a reason why you wouldn't just put it in your phone I could put it in my phone. And <laughs> I like, use those like, notes. You look so dyspeptic when I suggested something. Like that. I have the look on your face like you're about to, like, like you're about to puke. Dyspeptic. Oh, that's so a it's, good idea. It's a, very, but it's a very, I know it seems very kind of trite. I don't think it does. It's not picture. It's not camera ready. No. I don't, I don't want to be whipping out the seen phone. Yeah. whipping out the phone. Yeah, I no. will. I could if I you showed could, you a no, picture. But that's, that's I could a show you a picture of my kids and this no, and that. that's a bit more. But yeah. I kind of like this. I kind of like it's this. A very, this is the Wes Anderson in you right here. That's, That's right. like a very Wes Anderson prop. Well, you should see his this boy. This thing, right? He, he knows how to put together. Uh, he's he, On that last movie, French Dispatch, he's going to take the, uh, you know, Adam Stockhausen sets, I think, and artifacts and display them in a, in a kind of a formal but, setting. But I do, I I do want to ask you this question about the jobs yeah. thing very quickly. Two things. Yeah. One about the stuff about, about the Apple. One. Yeah. Is it true that when Steve Jobs called you, you didn't believe it was Steve Jobs, or didn't think it was Steve Jobs, or didn't recognize Steve Jobs, you were just like, who the hell is this person calling me? Well, I'm always behind the yeah. curve. I'm always yeah. behind the curve. And I was kind of, 
I don't know what year that was. Who is, mean, this, who is this? Who is this? Who is this weirdo talking to me about doing a, a, a computer I know. commercial? I know. I knew that he was the head of this company yeah. that put these things out, but I didn't know Steve and, Jobs. Steve Jobs. And more know. importantly, is it true that he wanted you to be like really a bigger voice, that like to be like the voice of Apple at one point? That there was some discussion about you being doing even more for the company. Not that I know of. No? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe is that what you? Is that what somebody said? Well, I think you may have said that in the past at some points, but maybe not. You know? No, well, I, I, maybe I was describing in my yeah, uh, yeah. usual yeah, it's, it's a hyperbolic, shame, sometimes. shamefully overinflated way, yes. over self-inflated way. I probably was trying to describe, yeah, he said, these are the commercials that are going to introduce this product and I want you to, or something like that. Maybe that's why I, that's, that's what I meant. Um, let me ask you one last question about your television career. Okay. Um, Would you like a cough drop? No, I'm okay. Thank okay. you very much. Very kind of you to ask. But are you <laughs> Do you mind if I indulge? I don't mind at all. That's a line of dialogue from a play. What is it? He yeah. offers her a stick of he offers her a stick of gum. Would you like a, a, a Wrigley's gum? Uh, would you mind if I indulge? He says. And you'd be right for this part. The gentleman caller in Glass Menagerie. Oh, my God. Okay. Yes. Because Williams you're a person stuff. going yeah. places. Yeah. You're yeah. a person. He'd say, yes. Uh, you know, I hope you don't yes. think I'm yes. too full of myself. But zing, bang, zing. I'm going there and I'm going there. I'm getting with that television thing. Yeah. That's the ne next big thing in America. You could do that part. I could do that part. I, I actually you. think I'm going to, if, if, if I can find a playhouse somewhere that's putting on that play, <coughs> I'm going to go, go audition. This is, this is it. And that's what I recommend for your next Halloween costume. Well, ah. The Gentleman Caller. The Gentleman Caller. Very <laughs> few will, will know. It's not like yes. Spider-Man. No, it's, very, it's, a very, it's, a very, it's a very, uh, very subtle costume. Yeah, it means I wouldn't have to dress up, which suit. is my preference for, uh, for Halloween. Really? Yeah, Although, just... you have a lovely casual look and your... Your, you know, I wear. Well, what? Look at that. Well, you're dre dressy. You have to. You're required to dress up a lot in your appearances as a p serious pundit, aren't, aren't you? Well, I suppose sometimes, but I, but, but, but I, but I still don't regard this as a costume, though. I don't think I go to no. a Halloween dressed like this. Right. Well, those are two different things we're talking right. about. Well, I know. Well, I, I, so I got confused. We went from a. I said something about my Halloween costume, and then you went off on a. It's my fault entirely. Well, possibly, of course, but possibly it's my fault too. But here's Certainly my question: not. my television, my television career question. Is there anything that's been greater in your television career than appearing on The Simpsons? On The Simpsons? Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say this show um, because no. this is it. Yeah, this is a uh, pinnacle. This the is Simpsons it. was fantastic. Yeah, wasn't it? It was. Let's watch. Come on. Oh, you watching? Mac, you got to get me that part. I will, but you got to do something for me. Problem is, the big parts these days are all going to family men. But I already got married. Yeah, but for a role like this, you got to pour it on. You and uh, a wife have got to have a baby. A baby, eh? What do I do? I'll send you over a pamphlet. Uh, listen, you can't buy that kind of PR, but you can get it for nothing by having a baby, which, by the way, your insurance will cover except for the deductible, which I'll reimburse you for if you get the part, which you will if you have a baby. Say Troy Bien. Okay, now listen, uh, let's talk baby names. You can't use Montana, Dakota, or Florida. They're taken. Uh, Oregon? Oh, Pacific Northwest. Very hot. <laughs> I like the little, I like the soul patch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Have you, have you ever had a soul patch? Oh, yeah, I've tried all manner yeah. of uh, things. Have you? Haven't you? I tried a soul patch. I'll tell you the problem. Yeah. Not enough. Not, I'm not like a Frank Zappa yeah. or somebody, you know, who has a very nice, yeah. uh, I don't know what color. I have nothing. I have nothing. I there's my lower lip and then there's this. So there's nothing. I wouldn't, nothing there. I wouldn't say you're wholly unlike Frank Zappa. There are some things about you that are rather Zappa-esque. Hey, say, thank you. To be honest with you. Susie Cream Cheese. Yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. And, you know, you have your children have a sort of a moon unit, moon kind unit. Of quality to them, you know? Charlie Ocean. Charlie Ocean. River Joe. River Joe. There we go. Like Kind of like Moon Units. Moon Units. Yes. You could make a song about that, couldn't you? Moon Units. Right, right here on the spot. Oh, you're a good singer. I'm not. I mean... What? What song would you have? Hey, is there a theme song for this Hell and High Water? Hey, by the way, did you see that movie, Hell or High Water? I did see that movie. Hey, yes, that's I a did. nice movie. I, I like did. that that's movie. A great, it's a very good movie. It's a very fine what, movie. What's your theme song? Well, it's just that uh, we have some, some instrumental, a little instrumental theme. Uh, is there anything that known? Or, well, or? It was made for us. Oh, it was? By, by one of the members of, the, of, a, of a group called Wu-Tang Clan. All right. Have you know, read RZA? Have you ever read you know the, the RZA? You know the RZA? RZA. RZA. The RZA. You do, are you, uh, hip hop's not really your thing, right? Who? Hip hop's not really your thing. Yeah. yeah. 
That's you know, I, I sang with um with Biz Marquis. Well, you did, and now that you raise it, let's go to the clip. Let's let's, 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 <laughs> let's I mean, since 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 you mention it, let's. No, you don't have I that. I just asked this question. Well, of course we do. But let me ask you this question: Is there anything any greater highlight than being on the Simpson? On the Simpsons? Is there any like moment in your television career that means more to you than that? That's been be- better than that. Yeah. No. I mean, the Simpsons. Fuck Columbo. That's the who? fuck Starsky and Hutch. Fuck Laverne and Shirley. Mm. You were on The Simpsons. Yeah, my friend. Well, it's my theory. It's my other serious theory. Yeah. Not so not so serious, yeah. but uh, th- that you can't be good as an actor. Here's how to pick things. Yeah. You can't be good unless the movie's good. You can't be good unless the mo- unless the the director and the writing is good, right? Yes. I don't think so. And 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 conversely and likewise, you you um, you, they they will make you look good. You need somebody to make you look good. So if you're on The Simpsons, they'll know how to use you yes. and write for you and yes. turn it into something. Uh, good. You know, we were talking before about the about. I just want to try to. I want to try to bring the, you know, in the limited time we have now. Yes. We think about the. We think about the oeuvre. 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 Yes. We. Oui. Do you speak French? No. Not at all. Uh, Your accent was so good on oeuvre. Uh, omelette du fromage. Uh, the man of cheese. Yes. I'm a man of cheese. I, I think that's. I think it's omelette. A cheese omelette. Oh, that's, cheese. I'm, that's a Steve Martin bit from back here. Omelette, oh. omelette du fromage. And that's the only, <laughs> the only French. I you know, French. My yes. my wife speaks French. She's yes, from Toronto. I'm, yes, I'm, oh, I'm aware. Are you aware? Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, boy, they. She speaks French to those kids. All the time, yeah, and they understand like yeah. everything she says. I do not. Yes, of course not. Um, do you speak any language besides English? Un uh, petit peu, mm. uh, not really. No. no, I can't say. No, yeah, you don't speak you, Spanish. You well, uh, you know, a little. I know, a, a little. little. Do, do, do you speak anything? No, no. I did four years of Latin in high school, which was great for the SATs and bad for like speaking any like non dead language any place in the world. My mother, Shirley Goldblum, had a very strong feeling yeah. when the school, uh, like I say, a kind of a mediocre school. Sorry, um, said, "Oh no, she he he they must take Latin." She was like, "No." Yeah. No, that's yeah. a dead. It's dead. There's no reason to she do was it. Right. He's not taking Latin. He's going to take right. either typing or French. I'll, if you have French, I'll tell you though, if you had taken the Latin, you would have done better on the SATs, and you would have gotten into Carnegie Mellon. Well, Carnegie Mellon, they didn't choose you because of your SAT scores. I, I, I did a bad was, audition for them, and that's I why sort, I wasn't I was chosen. Sort, I was sort of joking. Yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. A little, But uh, I don't know how I did in the SATs, but yeah, you, you know, yeah. but I made good grades all but through. They these say schools. that no. they say that the Latin. Should give you a grounding so that you can then learn Italian or Spanish or she you know, was probably like all of wrong. the Romance language. Well, she, no, she was right because they told me that, have. and I don't speak Spanish oh, well. or Italian or French or anything. Yeah, else. but for those so who like, know, I'll bet Stephen yeah. Fry, I'll bet would say, learn Latin yes. well, if you're if you're interested in language yeah. and you know the roots of all language. Well, what, yes. is, what does Stephen Fry know about language in the end? Um, <laughs> every, everything there is to know. Um, how do you like? I, this is again. I asked this question because I want to get to the music. Okay. I want to get to the music, but I want yeah, to, before yeah. we get to the music, I want to get to like, if you think about all you've done yeah. in film and television, yes. and you say you're still peaking now, like what, what's left to do? What do you think, like what are the challenges you haven't taken on as an actor? As an actor? Not as a musician, because we yeah. can talk about that separately a bit. Yeah. But like when you think about like, okay, you're peaking right now, right? You've said that, you're peaking. I believe you're peaking. You're peaking, we all think you're peaking. I'm so enjoying myself, what have you not done? What, what, what have you not done? What's well, like out there that like I've not, you know, I need to take this on? Because you're peaking, but unless you have figured out some secret to immortality, you know, like, I mean, we're, we're on the back nine here. You're telling me. So, back, this so, may be the, uh, we know, I mean, we don't know. I don't know what, I, I wouldn't ask you to say what hole we, you're on, but you're on the We may be in the clubhouse already, on, already not, enjoying well, our, uh, enjoying an our. adult uh, beverage, yeah. There may be not another not another hole to play. You're having a your little beverage, and I'm microdosing, and we're happy. We are off. We're off. We now we're in the clubhouse. Anybody younger than us thinks that we're not only in the clubhouse, but we've actually been taken to a home at this point. So, but but you're still out there doing the work. You're peaking. I, What's I, left I've to been, get done? I've in been the very busy. There's a finite amount of time that you have left. Yes, sir. We all have left. For all, amount that's of. that's correct. Yeah. But what's like if you're peaking? Yeah. Creatively. Yeah. You know, curiosity. Yes. Uh, performances. Yes. Opportunities. Yes. People throwing shit at you. They are. They are. You're very busy. Yes. And you have many parts that you could choose. What's left to do creatively? You're like, this is what I haven't done that I think I really want to do. I have one idea, but I want you to, I'm not going to give it to you until you answer. 
<coughs> I'm eager to hear your idea. Um, uh, because here's here's the here's the answer to it. If I can marshal my thoughts, mm. um, the, the um, I, I mean, one answer is so much. I mean, there's so much I haven't done. So many parts I haven't done. So so many people to work with. So yeah, you know. Um, so many, but again, finite. We got, we got to make some choices here. Yes, right. Well, like, that's what's... that's the thing. And then, so that's the other answer. The answer is too 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 much to mention. Yeah. Too, you know, obviously a million things. The other thing is, well, it could yes, because of where we're at. If it all, you know, if I didn't get a chance to do anything else, and here's the other thing. You, you know, the one credo says. Um, you should the, the right posture, the talented posture, is to always go. If nothing else were to happen besides this, yeah. I'd be entirely satisfied. Yes. So those are the two seemingly paradoxical or contradictory answers to the same thing. A million things. My appetite is as keen as ever, keener, and my forces are with me. But you know, uh, who, who who knows? When I look, but if at, I didn't do anything, I'd be fine too. When I look at the IMDb page, this is yeah. something on the internet. Yeah. Uh, it's a listing of things you've done. Yes, sir. There's, as I said, a list of acting credits as long as my arm, yeah. Yeah. my right. Yeah. 38 and but acting. many things I go back and I go, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but, but, I don't, but I'm not eager done, to see but them. But you've you know? done a lot of acting, yeah. right? You've done a lot of, of, of personal appearances. You've done, you've been involved in a lot of things. Uh, but but the, the, the one line that's rather bereft uh -oh. is the directing line. Oh, I see. Which many actors are very keen to do. At some point, they decide they want to direct. Many actors, that's an aspiration. And you, I believe, have like maybe one directing credit. That's, that's right. Next to like 139 acting credits, producing credits, writing credits, you know, music credits, you, you know, you, the, the Emmy Award nominations, Academy Award nominations, all this shit. But directing, only one. I, and I'm not saying you should want to direct, but I'm curious whether you do. Because I, I'm kind of a, a um, craft nerd or, you know, you know, whatever you say, which is that I kind of really wanted to find out everything. Hey... I was early on, I was like, you know, um, I should, I, I, there's something I don't know. I don't want to not know something. I want to know about how you do, do this thing as well as possible. And so I taught for a couple of decades whenever I wasn't yeah. working in order to not only be involved with people and help people, and that was really fun, but to kind of know from the inside out. Uh, what it was I was trying to yeah. do and how this one particular technique that I liked uh, worked um, in all its um, detail. Uh, as a result of that, I directed this one short called Little Surprises and because I wanted to improvise with the certain students that I wanted to work with and we wanted to make something and turn that into a script. And uh, But then we had to, and Showtime said, okay, we'll give you money to do it, to direct this thing, but you have to have a couple of known actors. And so, you know, we got Rod Steiger mm. and Julie Harris yeah. and Kelly Preston. And uh, we made this thing and it got nominated for an Academy Award. Yes. 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 And, and yes, I, yes. Uh, and, um, yeah. so, but I, I, it's not because I really wanted to be a director or, right. or had a real hankering to to have a career as a director, which I didn't and don't. Okay. Um, and still don't. Uh, I did not. You were doing enough things. Not really. You were doing enough things. Here's something you did have a hankering to do. Yeah. Yes, yes. This was a thing. Yeah. Long time. You've been a musician for a long time. So, so, so I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you about that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to ask you about that. Oh. This is a thing. Are you asking? I'm about to. Yeah. Uh, then I'm telling. The, here's the. Here, but, oh. but but I just oh. here's the, you wanted you, like you but, but for, like almost from the time you wanted to be an actor, right? Yeah. Like as a kid. Around the same time. Yeah. Maybe it's not coincidental yeah. that these seeds got planted yeah. and started yeah. to, you know, started to do something. Around the same time, right when I was ten, I started to play piano, and my teacher, my piano teacher, I was. Okay, with the lessons, yeah. I'm playing with Charlie now. He's taking lessons, oh and I sit, this morning I sat with him, I sit every morning after breakfast. He's disciplined like I am, and we go to the piano. He's, he knows we have to do it, and before he goes to school, we sit at the piano, I sit on the bench with him, and he runs through his new piece, yeah. which he's putting together, and then all his old pieces, which are now, you know, 20 songs or something, and yeah. we run through them. Yeah. I tell you, this morning he played better than ever. He played better than ever, and I said, "Oh, that was good." I'd been kind of—it's a—it's a tricky and very beautiful, fun thing to do. To go, I don't want to push him, but yeah, I want yeah, to push him. See if I can well see what yeah, you can yeah, do to yeah. it's interest him and to further, you know, his effectiveness. And so something started to work today. It was really fun. Um, 
In the same way, I do that still. I played better today myself. I played already today than I have in some ways. And But I learned that later. Early on, my point is, when I was taking lessons, I was kind of not a good student. And I would hope that the teacher didn't make his way there the next week because I hadn't practiced. But when he gave me around 10 or 11 or 12, a jazz song to play, Alley Cat, it was. And this syncopation came to me. There was something I loved about that. Yeah. Fell in love with it, and I was like, I'm going to sit here and play until I know how to do that. And that's when I started to get a little better. And a couple of years into that, I learned how to improvise, and I wanted to get jobs in cocktail lounges just for the fun of it, just for the crazy and kind of illogical fun of it, but not because I wanted it as a career. Yes. Around that same time, I said, I want to be an actor. Yes. My parent, my dad said, if you find something you love to do, and I loved this thing, I this experience I had with it, so I decided I wanted to be an actor. Yeah. Those were two parallel tracks yes. that were a, always a little different. In the same way, they're still different. I do this kind of for fun, and it's blossomed into a couple of albums and a, a lot of fun places and gigs, and you know. But that, but that's kind of. I, I, here's the actual the clip I really want to play. Yeah, is the play is the clip where, uh, where you where you kind of like. You made a you know, made an appearance on a television show in Britain with um, Gregory Porter. You were on that show. What's yes. the name of the show? Uh, Graham Norton show. The Graham Norton show. Yes. You were being on the same same night same the same yeah. show. Yeah. As Mr. Porter. Yes. And you played. Yeah. Let's play. I want to watch this because then somebody follows you home basically and offers you a record deal. So I'll tell you exactly. This is my. This is why I want to play this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Are you one? Are you real? Just a cold and lonely, lovely work of art. I mean, come on. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, now, uh, look at uh, a handsome devil here. Uh, that's 2017. Okay? 2017, really? And I will just say yeah. that in 2018, the first yeah. Mildred Snitzer Orchestra, Jeff yeah. Goldblum album comes out. Yeah. The one that goes to number one yeah. on the U.S. jazz charts. Yeah. <laughs> just to say. Yeah. And then in 2019, the next yeah. Jeff Goldblum Mildred Snitzer Orchestra album comes out. So that, I just yeah. tell this story because you, you this is a love, but an avocation, an yeah. avocation. I'm not sure if they say A or A. I, I, I took four years of Latin. I don't know. I, but I an A or A vocation, not yeah. a vocation, not a job, not a professional yeah. thing. You're yeah. fucking around. You're playing. All of a sudden, you hop on this guy's set. You weren't invited to play, but you saw the guy. You go, oh, hopped in. You were supposed to be on this show. No, no, jumped I in. No, I didn't hop in exactly. No, Whatever he, happened. Yeah. But some guy follows you home. Didn't exactly follow me home, but I'll but tell you. But he comes out here, yeah, and you got a record deal, and now you're off to the races. This is like mind blowing. I know. I, no, I, I, yes, it is. You tell I the think whole story, I, but I just it blows my mind. Totally, it does me too. Totally unheard of. Um, here's what happened. I was going to be on Graham Norton to promote so something or other, and they said, "Hey, the other uh, musical guest is Gregory Porter." Yeah, uh, and he's asked whether uh, I know you're on in a couple of days, but he's going to he's promoting this album. This. Uh, Nat King Cole album, he's singing, he wants to sing uh, Mona Lisa, you want to play with him? He does it with a piano. Yeah. Okay, I'll play, he'll do it with you if you, you want. Okay, send me the chart, send me his key. I kind of worked it out a little bit and then did, did it like that. Let me just say, let me just say, that's kind of my way. What I just said, you sort of jumped in. That's yeah. what I meant. Exactly. Right. You were right. You that's... were like, you're not part of the guy's band. It wasn't like a planned thing. No, you no, didn't no. come to London with him to perform. No. It was just kind of spontaneous Nor thing. did I practice or work it out. Right. And we actually, I, I met him backstage yeah. in the, you know how those places are, yeah. in the green room. Yeah. And they had a little keyboard, a little electric keyboard. And I, we said, let's go through it once. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Let, let's do that. Something yeah. like that. And then just uh, did that. Magic. Yeah. It was fun. Well, he's you know he made it look good because he's spectacularly brilliant. But he's not the guy that got the record deal out of that. Well, movie. he has record deals. I'm he, aware he of that. I'm aware of deal. that. I'm aware of that. So his company, yeah, Decca Decca Records. They said, you know, we saw you on the show, and uh, maybe you want to do a an album. And then he came, we talked about it, and then we came up with an album. And you had no intention of doing an album? Not really. It's not really People on your had mind. said before, hey, maybe you want to do something. And I was like, 
you know. So went, that's like the moment. Forth. That's the moment when it happened. Yeah. Well, whatever it is. Spurred, yeah, we made a couple spurred. of uh, albums. But yeah, I know it's very lucky. It's unbelievably lucky. I mean, and people who are real musicians and devoted their lives to it and strategize in order to get some kind of, you know, recording yeah. opportunity, yeah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, I didn't do that. And it's very, very lucky. But the same thing happened in acting. I went to New York and before I even, I never waited tables or anything like that. I kind of fell into the first couple of jobs and it kind of, one thing, you know, um, but transpired dude, after that. But dude, your first jazz album yeah. went to number one on yes. the U.S. jazz charts. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. That's just like you know. That's not. I mean, it's actually in terms of 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 uh, um, what's the word for uh, when 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 a child is uh, 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 advanced prodigy. Pro, 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 prodigy when they're what when, when they're, they're when they're ahead of their uh, ahead of their precocious. grade precocious. Precocious. That's yes. the word. Thank you very yes. much. This a lot of good four years of Latin did me. You're in terms of precocity. Yes. Precociousness. Yes. This the music career is actually ahead of the movie of the acting career, because you know you had a bunch of movies before you had anything. Yes. Number one record, yes, your first yes. record. Yes, that's that's. How much did that? I right. mean, that must have been astonishing to you. It was astonishing and and, and astonishing. Ex exciting and satisfying exciting, and gratifying. Exciting, satisfying, uh, gratifying, uh, all, all that. And then all we right. did another one, but mo even more gratifying. That's nice. And sometimes I go places and I'll hear it on the radio. Yeah. They'll play play things on the radio. But the people I play with, it's humbling. You know, you can't get too thrilled with yourself because really, what you can do is what you can do, and that's how I play. And and uh, and each week I'm learning something, and each day I'm using it as a kind of uh, daily meditation study program that I really is very nourishing. The first album is called The Capital Sessions. Yeah, Capital... Capital, capital Sessions? Like capital, capital. Yeah, the Capital... What, the, the Capital... What's the name of that bit? It's The Capital Records. Uh, you know, The Sessions, Sessions. Yeah, The Capital <laughs> Records. Whatever that's called. Yeah, yeah, I can't about. remember the name of my own album. That's the one that went to number one on the jazz charts. Yeah. The second album, though, yeah. you have like Sharon Van Etten and, and Fiona Apple and, and Fiona these incredible... Apple. And you have Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus, incredible and collaborators. And Gregory Porter. And Gregory Porter, incredible collaborators, right? Yeah, oh, spectacular. So is yeah. there... So I just, I guess, before I ask you to play a little piano, then I'll let you go I'll home. I'll play a little because bit. Because you're yeah. fucking... We've already blown past your heart out by an hour. That's okay. um, so as I said, we're going to do this a seven part. Uh, we're going to do this as a series of shorts. This is our Ken Burns. This is our Ken Burns, our Ken Burns, uh, that, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I want to ask you this. In what ways has the, has the music thing influenced the acting thing and the acting thing influenced the music thing in any way? Are they just separate streams, things you do that you both like, both of, you enjoy? Or is there now some way in which the music is opening up the acting and making you think about it differently? Or a way in which the acting has opened up the music? Or how are they, is there synergy? Yes, um, um, I, I think there is. Um, uh, you know, you, you know that I'm not so career oriented, but I mean, people's Creatively. general impression yeah. of me that I play piano to, or maybe some of these things, you know, makes for a nice uh, melange or a compote or a cob salad of, you know, an, an impression <laughs> of some kind. But more from the inside That's out. That's what I'm asking. And more of an That's interest to me. On, yeah. Well, here's the here's the real answer to that. Um, uh, y yes. First of all, they're very related. When I act, I'm always interested in music yeah. for one reason or another. For one reason or another, it sort of informs <clears throat> here and there uh, acting, and um, in a very real way, and in, in various ways, uh, and in ways of improvisation too. If you if you're interested in improvisation and acting, yeah. it's not far from. And for me, who has some experience with musical improvisation, you can't turn your, it's, it's certainly related yeah. where you go, hey, this is a conversation we're having and um, what, what my openness to you and my attentiveness to you um, is going to trigger, here's my answer to you. And here, this what, what you do triggers something in me. Yeah. That happens in music and in acting and they, they inform each other that way. But also my approach to my own um, uh, identity relationship to music has has nicely infected acting. Whereas acting, I was always, hey, this better work or else, or yeah. my livelihood is dependent on it, my identity is dependent on it in some way. Music was always, hey, this is just for fun. Now, when I do this, it's more kind of like what I do with music. That's kind of influenced that, which is like, 
there's no place I'm trying to get. There's no place to get anyway. It's just really the pleasure of doing this, you know, and the inclusion and our openness and, in, in, you know, our, our intention, our intent to include others in our interesting conversation, you know. You're a, you're a pleasure giver. Uh, yes. <laughs> and, yeah. and receiver. Yeah, you're a pleasure giver and receiver. And this place, this is your new home? Believe it or not, this the is... Pen, you used to be at, at Rockwell? We used to be at Rockwell. We were, we've done here. this for 30 years. For three decades, I've been is out and true? about. 30 yes. years? Peter Weller started, we started in my house playing, and he said, hey, you know, we should do this out and about. Right. And we found a place, that was about 30 years ago, and then there's been this core band that's kind of evolved, and then, yeah, I've been doing it for 30 years. You're then, like an overnight sensation in music, that's an overnight sensation in 30 years. Well, that's the thing, because I didn't expect it to be right. anything, I wasn't asking anything yeah. from it, you know, it's it's part of what it is, is because it's slow cooked in a kind of a, a nice, uh, uh, Braise. You, what, what's a, a nice slow cooker? You know, the, the uh, nice, crock pot. Nice au jus. It, with it, the, no, it's au jus, and it's it's, au jus. it's 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 steamed in its own juice. It's steamed yeah. in its own juice. It's just like I have, and it's in a crock pot. And um, so this place we did Rockwell in Los Feliz for a while. Yeah. And now that's closed its doors because after COVID. Yes. For one this, reason or another. So this is your new home. This is the new pen. Well, for now it for now. is. Well, for new. I didn't say I, permanence. I said I, just your new well, home. Well, nothing's permanent as we know. I I love it. This is called the Pendry Hotel, which you probably as a Los Angeles expert, it, it only went up. I was going to say, I knew nothing about this. When uh, when you said this, we're playing at the Pendry, I said at the what? Well, it just got built this last, you know, it finally got finished this last year. Yep. And this is the location, this is the site where the House of Blues was, oh, as I'm sure you remember. Oh, yes, yes, I've yes, I've read yes, yes. interesting histories of the Sunset Strip and, uh, you know, all, and... Uh, Magic Castle. She was right around here Magic somewhere. Castle. Right, Magic Castle. Chateau Holy Marmont. Shit. Do you know what's happening? Oh, the Magic Castle, yeah. And Yamashiro. Magic. Yes. Above that. Oh, my God, Yamashiro. So Which my, now has brunches, the griddle. So, some of my earliest high school dates were at Yamashiro. I, I was in, in that little gazebo, you know. Oh, that gazebo, I know the gazebo, yeah. I'm in that yes. gazebo, too. So, um, so what was that? Oh, so we wound up here. This is now the Pendry Hotel. And this room is now called a Sunrose. Sun Rose, R-O-S-E, the Sun Rose. It was the Brightly, but now it's going to be called, because they're just opening up now, the, the uh, Sun Rose. Yeah. So we'll be here Wednesday. You'll be yeah. here yeah. Uh, in, a, in a couple of days. I, 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 can't, I can't wait. I can't wait. So, well, just, it's, it's, so what, what am I going to see? Just give me, give us three minutes of this, two well, minutes I'll, of this, three I'll, seconds of this. Oh, sure. Some, some kind of like, uh, oh, sure. play some Here, kind of this play. is a nice uh, piano. Here, I'll play this. Et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, all your many fans. Um, Thank you. Well, there we go. You're a genius. 